Good morning. Today is Friday, May 23rd, 22nd. I apologize. Friday, May 22nd, 2020. Happy Yom Yerushalayim. What a great day to celebrate. Uh, I hope you said Hallel this morning. If you did not, please say it when we finish. To thank Hashem for the miracle of the reunification of Yerushalayim. Today we celebrate this reunification that took place heroically during the Six-Day War. And I think that it's important to have a proper understanding from the point of view of religious Zionism, a proper understanding of the role and the meaning that Jerusalem should have for us. And I'd like to share with you some insights that I heard originally a number of years ago from Rabbi Matisio Solomon. There's a Pasuk in Tehillim many of us are familiar with. Tehillim Kufchaf Beis, Psalms number 122. Yerushalayim habnuya ki'ir Jerusalem is built as a city that connects us Together, Shesham Alu Shvatim Shivteka Edus the Israel Lahodos Lashem Hashem. From there ascends the tribes of Israel to give praise to the name of God. Yerushalayim is the cohesive force of Klal Yisrael, of the entire Jewish people as it reaches towards God. That's what Yerushalayim is. Now we see this in terms of halacha, in terms of Jewish law. I've shared this with you before. We have a halacha in Shulchan Aruch, in the code of Jewish law and the laws of prayer. Bekumo lihispalel, whenever we stand to pray for the Amidah, the Shemona Esrei, wherever we are, any day, if we are standing outside of the land of Israel, Israel, we should turn so that we are facing towards Israel. For us, that means east. For uh, South Africa, it means north. For Russia, it means south. Wherever, wherever we are. But not only towards Israel, but and we should be conscious that we are facing not only Israel, but Gamli Yerushalayim, towards Israel, towards Yerushalayim, Ula Migdash, and the place where the Beis HaMikdash used to stand and will stand, Ula Kadshe HaKadoshim, and the spot where the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the Holy of Holies, stands. Now, what's important to understand, first of all, uh, those of us who daven at a dath, um, who have a little bit of a geographical uh, obstacle because our sanctuary faces the opposite direction. Okay, so one of the advantages of praying at home is that we are not bound by architecture. So I would strongly advise that when we are praying at home, or if there should come a time in the future when it is safe to daven outside, that time is not here yet, but if it should come a time soon, then we should be facing Yerushalayim. However, it's not just the geographical orientation. The Mishnah adds the following words, Sheyachashu belibo verayono, a person should think in their heart and in their mind. In other words, a person should visualize Ki'ilu hu omed ba migdash asher biyushalayim. A person should visualize themselves standing in Yerushalayim, facing towards the place where the base of migdash is supposed to be. It's not just the, the 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 direction in which we're standing. It is the internal visualization we're required to see ourselves standing in Yerushalayim when we pray. And if we have not done so, this is a an essential halacha in the laws of prayer. If we have not done so, 
then we have not completely fulfilled our obligation of prayer. In other words, every time we pray, in order for our prayer to be most fully accepted, we must imagine ourselves in Jerusalem. Why? Why do we have to go through this visualization technique? So there's an answer provided by Rabbi Chaim Volazhin. And I just want to point out, Rabbi Chaim Volazhin lived over 200 years ago. He lived his entire life in Europe, never merited being able or even having the possibility of being able to merit visiting Jerusalem. But he quotes a question concerning the following verse. And this is a Pasuk in the prophet Yermio, the prophet Jeremiah. It's a famous verse. Perhaps you're familiar with it. And the verse goes as follows. God is speaking to the Jewish people through the prophet Yermio. And God has the prophet say, do as follows. God says to Yermio, Halach v'karasa Ba'azne Yerushalayim Lamar. Yermio, go and call out, proclaim to the ears of Jerusalem the following message. Hashem. This is what God says. Zacharti la chesed nurayach. I remember the kindness that you did in your youth. This refers to when the relationship between God and the Jewish people was in its youth. In other words, when we first left Egypt. I remember, God says, the kindness that you did in the youth, in the blossom of our relationship. Avas Kulula Sayach, when the love of our relationship was strong. Lechtech Acharai Bamidbar, God says to the Jewish people, You were willing to follow me in the desert, Be'eretz Lo Zeruah, into a land that was not settled. It's an amazing kindness, it's an amazing trust. Just think what it must have been like for a people of slaves who had lived under abject persecution and poverty to now be released and to be commanded by a God they cannot see, they do not completely understand, and they're being commanded to follow this God into a desert with no food, no water, no sustenance. They don't know where they're going. And yet, they have trust in God and they follow. And God says, he tells his prophet Yermio, tell the people I will never forget the trust and the kindness that they showed in following the instructions that I gave. Okay. It's a beautiful message that God shares with the Jewish people through his prophet Jeremiah. Let's start by asking two questions. God says to the prophet, go and call into the ears of Jerusalem. What does it mean that Yerushalayim has ears? Today, Yerushalayim has ears. <laughs> Today, Yerushalayim, all over Yerushalayim, has cameras and, and ears. But at the time of Yermio, what does it mean, the ears of Yerushalayim? And secondly, what does it mean that Yerushalayim crossed the desert? Yerushalayim didn't cross through the desert. The Jewish people crossed through the desert in order to reach Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is a geographical place. Yerushalayim was and is and always will be in Israel. The Jewish people left Egypt and traveled towards Israel and reached Yerushalayim. What does it mean to say to Yerushalayim that you walk through the desert to reach? So here's the answer that Ruchayim of Voloshin provides. And it's a yesod. It's a fundamental principle in Jewish understanding. And that is, Yerushalayim is equivalent to Klal Yisrael, the eternal Jewish people. It is the same. He says these words, Sod Makar, Knisas Nishmoseim shall call Yisrael. Yerushalayim is the secret 
of the source of the gathered souls of all of Israel. And the reason that we have to visualize ourselves standing in Yerushalayim when we pray is because it is Yerushalayim that represents who we are. It is when we are connected to Yerushalayim that we are complete as a Klal Yisrael. We are able to approach, approach God in prayer as Klal Yisrael, as the entire Jewish people, present, past, and future, when we are connected with Yerushalayim, they are one and the same. Another famous verse, this time from the prophet Yeshayahu. al chom sayach Yerushalayim hifkarari shomrim. Along the walls of Jerusalem, I have appointed guardians. Who are the guardians of Yerushalayim? Who are the Shomrei Yerushalayim? Well, of course, today in particular, Yom Yerushalayim, we remember brave soldiers, men and women, who risked their lives and who gave their lives for Yerushalayim. And from that day until this day, before that day, and through the Six-Day War, until this day, at this very moment, brave men and women who guard the walls of Yerushalayim, every one of us knows that if these brave young people were not watching and protecting every single moment, God forbid, because our enemies are doing everything they can to harm us. So the Shomrei Yerushalayim we see, we pay tribute to them, brave soldiers and security officials and the residents of Yerushalayim who have the privilege to live there and to populate it and to make it into a regular city as we discussed last night. But there's also another group. Listen please to the words of the Radak, one of the famous commentators to the prophet Yeshayahu. Included in this category of Shomrei Yerushalayim, of those who guard and protect Jerusalem, he says, the Radak says as follows, I'll call Yisrael Begalosam. This applies to every single Jew in exile, wherever we are in the world. Shehem Shomrim Vitsofim Tamid Binyan Yerushalayim. Jews everywhere in the world are looking for and watching for, awaiting, guarding for the moment of the quick rebuilding of Jerusalem. Umazkirim bone Yerushalayim bayoma balayla. And they, we, cry out to Hashem, bone Yerushalayim. We ask Hashem to rebuild Yerushalayim every day and every night. Bitfilosehem in our prayers three times every day. Ubibirchosehem in our blessings, especially in benching, every time we say the benching. That means that, yes, of course, there are the dramatic in person, Shomre Yerushalayim, to whom we all pay tribute and remember today and every day. But every one of us, according to the Radak, is also in the category of Shomrei Yerushalayim because we are praying for Yerushalayim. We are facing Yerushalayim. We are awaiting being able to be in Yerushalayim, either to live there permanently or at least to visit. But even in our absence, we're pointed towards it. We are visualizing ourselves there. And in doing so, we also are Shomrei Yerushalayim. God will ask every one of us, were we a shomer, a guardian, a protector of Yerushalayim? And we need to be ready to answer whether we are in Israel, but even if at the moment we are not, we need to make sure 
certainly today, as we commemorate Yom Yerushalayim, as we say Hallel this morning and celebrate today, we should realize the significance of Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is us. We are Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is nothing less than our collective soul. Yerushalayim is where we meet God, no matter where we are. I wish you a very wonderful and celebratory Yom Yerushalayim, a great day, and a very, very happy Shabbat Shalom.